bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensa Otterville. And now, today's word. Today, my sermon is titled, Here a Little, There a Little. Here a Little, There a Little. Let's go back to the foundational text we used in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 to 10. And we have been using it in our declaration and quoting from it. And now I'm preaching from it. The background to this is that uh, Isaiah the prophet prophesies about impending doom for Israel. He tells them that because of their apostasy and their, uh, their love for sin and idolatry, the judgment was coming upon them. And, and then he tells them about how they were going to be taken into captivity. As Isaiah prophesies, there are other priests and prophets of his time who make fun of him because they are part of the problem that Isaiah is talking about. So they talk about the preaching of Isaiah uh, and, and they make mockery of him in a way uh, that he just keeps on repeating the same thing and saying the same thing and saying the same thing over and over. So the passage we are about to read is part of their criticism of the way Isaiah preached. In a sense, it also describes accurately the way Isaiah preached. So Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those weaned from milk, those just drawn from the breast, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's almost like the way you criticize somebody who does things orderly. Everything is pepe pe and pepe pe and pepe pe. Uh, so if they were uh, fantis or cheap people, that's what they would have said. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So, Isaiah, when he ministered the word of God, was very systematic. He was repetitive. He kept saying the same things over and over again because when people haven't understood a point there is no need going to the next point it's always important for you to repeat the same thing until it is grasped and part of having order in our lives is that we have to be able to live precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little so what does the phrase here a little there a little mean what does it mean what 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 does it imply now if you look at the phrase itself you realize that it is talking about a process you don't see haste if we be, want to build into the future we have to do it here a little there a little and there are three concepts that emerge from that phrase the first one is the concept of growth growth here a little there a little means growth to increase gradually gradual increase is at the heart of every real sustainable growth real growth is a slow process you can't see it happening but it happens and i'm sure all of us used to have People comment on us growing when we were children. When I was a child, any time uh, adults who had not seen me for a long time saw me, one of the first things they would say is, you're growing. You're growing tall. Ah, the boy is growing. I say that to young people now. You're growing. But when, when, when those older people told me I was growing, I didn't know I was growing. I, I thought I was just me. But they saw growth because growth doesn't 
happen in jumps. It is very slow. So it takes some time, especially when people haven't seen you, to see whether you're growing. And it also happens when you're putting on weight. You don't see it until people say, hey, what's happening? Similarly, in the same way, spiritual growth also is slow. You can't see yourself growing spiritually. As you feed on the Word of God, as you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you grow spiritually. And many times when you've been a Christian for some time, you don't see yourself growing spiritually until people begin to comment that something has changed about you, something is different about you, and then you realize that your whole understanding is changing. And then when you have problems, you solve them differently. And, and when situations come, the, the words that come out of your mouth are very different from the words that used to come out of your mouth. Slowly, you grow spiritually. In the same way, if you want to grow financially, you're going to grow slowly. Financial growth is not going to come by one instant you having all the money you need. It's going to grow slowly. Here a little, there a little. That phrase, here a little, there a little, means growth. It also means accumulation. Accumulation. To gather and to add up. Growth that is not lost will be accumulated and it will add up. You don't just lose your growth. You have to continue growing and adding up. Spiritually, we grow by adding up what we know in Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, it says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Add to your faith, accumulate, you add virtue over virtue over virtue, you grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory. So here a little, there a little means you're growing, but it's not just one-time growth. It is growth that adds up. It accumulates. And so it is spiritually, and so it is financially. If you want to grow, here a little, there a little, you're going to do it by adding up. And thirdly, here a little, there a little means diversification. Diversification. To vary and to grow. Here a little, there a little. From one end, a little here, a little there. You don't put all in one basket. It means you don't put everything in one place. Spiritually, you cannot grow in only one area of your life. You cannot just grow in faith and not grow in love. You cannot grow in love and not grow in prayer. You have to grow here a little, there a little. Diversify your spiritual growth. There are people who are full of faith and full of lies at the same time. So they've grown here a little, but not there a little. There is truth. They haven't grown there, but they've grown in faith. There are people who have grown in prayer and grown in gossip at the same time. So they, you, you grow in prayer, you must also grow in self-control. You grow in self-control, you must grow in holiness. So you keep growing here a little, there a little. Diversification. That's how it works spiritually, but it also works financially. If you want to grow financially, there has to be diversification. Here a little, there a little. You don't put all your eggs into one basket. So, when we talk about a 20-year plan, which is the background for which, on which I'm, I'm speaking, you have to get the concept of here a little, there a little. You have to get that concept. The 20-year plan is not going to happen instantly. Your vision for 20 years is not going to happen instantly. What you want to have in the future will not happen instantly. It's going to happen here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line. It's systematic, it's process, it's procedure, it's structural, it's gradual, 
but it surely gets there. It surely gets there. And many times in life, when we want big things to happen to us, we're waiting for one big miracle. And so and that, that's why people get desperate. That one big miracle. Sometimes people want God to just, boom, give them a miracle. And all of a sudden, all their problems are solved. It doesn't work that way. Even when God was fixing the earth, he didn't start day one and say, let there be light, let there be firmament, let there be grass, let there be, and, and let there be man. Day one, no. He starts day one, let there be light, day two, let there be firmament, day three, and so four, five, six, and then he creates man. God works here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line. It's not going to happen instantly. And whilst I was preparing for this message, I was considering some of the things that have grown. The largest river in the world is the Amazon River. The Amazon River. The Amazon River is in South America. It is a huge river. It's not the longest, but it's the largest. The Amazon River provides 20% of the world's fresh water. It covers about 40% of South America. It's a huge river. And uh, the Amazon Basin, the space it covers in the Amazon area is 7 million kilometers squared. That's big. It pours tons and tons and tons of water into the ocean. The Amazon travels about seven kilometers and by the time it enters the Atlantic Ocean to deposit water, which is depositing every second, thousands and thousands of cubic whatever, meters of, of water. And, and by the time it gets there, its width is about 120 miles of water pouring into the ocean. It's a phenomenal sight. Those of you who watch things like National Geographic and so on, if you've seen the Amazon, it's just phenomenal. And the animals that live there and all of that. So I just, I just I had never thought about it. I said, where does the Amazon start from? Where does it begin from? Because by the time everybody sees the Amazon, it's this huge river. It's supplying 20% of fresh water. Many animals live in its waters. Many people live on its banks and it provides so much. It touches three different countries in South America. Where does this river start from? And so I did some research on it and uh, I found out that the Amazon starts from a cliff, a mountain top in Peru in a cliff called the Nevado Miss Me. So I said, what is the Nevado Miss Me? And where does this whole thing begin from? So I, I put together a little clip and just a little uh, film to just show where this huge river, which is bigger than Ghana and Nigeria put together and Togo in between with Benin, all put together. This thing is bigger than all of us. The whole huge Amazon River starts as a trickle from that place and travels 7,000 kilometers and in the process is joined, builds into various tributaries and provides 20% of all the fresh water in the world. Here a little, there a little. So you want to build a big Amazon? It's going to start small. There is power in smallness. So go to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 and 10. And then we look at Job chapter 8, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 to 10 and Job chapter 8 verse 7 now the prophet 
Zechariah was one of the prophets of Judah when they returned. And one, one of the things that happened when they had come back from captivity, remember Isaiah prophesied they were going to go into captivity. Now they have come back and Zechariah is a young prophet who, who is prophesying to them about the time. And at this time they've returned after over 70 years in captivity and, and nothing is working. The temple is broken. The walls are broken. And they start to build the temple. They lay the foundation of the temple and the people look at the foundation of the temple. They remember the temple as a huge edifice. Now they're trying to rebuild the temple. They lay the foundation and people really are not impressed. So this is what God spoke to Zachariah about. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the days of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Who has despised the day of small thing? This is what one of Job's friends said to him. He says, Job 8, 7, Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly though your beginning was small yet your latter end would increase abundantly all of us contend with smallness smallness is part of our lives you never seem to have enough I don't know about you but Throughout my life, I have never seemed to have enough. Never. For anything I've done in my life, never seemed to have enough. You always have a big vision with small resources. And so what do you do when you have this big idea, but what you have in your hand is small. You want to be great, but you're small. Well, from Zachariah in Job, we learn a couple of lessons. First, is that if you're going to really attempt to do great things, you have to believe in your small beginnings. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebe, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebe. Email otebe at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.